good afternoon and i welcome you all to this lovely webinar of mega cv uh, right at the offset i would like to share a great news with you now we always talk about our packaging being the supreme packaging in all core moxicillium molecules so what we did we started thinking that uh, is it the best packaging and uh, does it hold true for indian market so what we did uh, we tested this packaging for extreme indian conditions in india you know at any given point of time somewhere it is raining right now also it is raining somewhere so india has this diverse climate and does this packaging hold true in that climate so we ask a agency which is a renowned agency to check this packaging for humidity and temperature so what they did is they put this packaging in a extreme temperature that is 38 degree celsius and 90% relative humidity after 10 days we tested this pack for any leakages and uh, you will be surprised that there was 0% leakage in this pack so this means that this package is meant to be for india and it will hold true for to its fullest so this packaging is the best packaging that you can get i thought right at the offset i'll share this news with you and uh, let's move on to our topic uh, today's topic is very important and interesting now uh, being a doctor i myself can relate to this topic more because uh, this is a topic which nobody taught in the college but right when you start your practice you have to learn this by your own this topic is definitely about growing your practice the skills that you acquired in the colleges makes you a doctor but these skills if you acquired during your practice will make you a successful doctor now looking at this topic uh, topic is very important and at the same time the speakers that we have for this topics are very few and we are fortunate that we have with us dr sujit pardesi who is one of the renowned speaker on this topic sir is a doctor by profession at the same time he has this topic which he has mastered so he has seen best of both the worlds and who would be the best person to guide you to grow your practice than a doctor so i think this session is going to be a highlight of today in your life and uh, what i feel is without any uh, wasting any time i will uh, welcome doctor thank you doctor for joining us sir has uh, taken out time from his busy schedule and uh, i think we will all benefit from this uh, topic so i'll ask uh, i'll request doctor to please start the session sir thank you very much sir thank you a very good afternoon to all of you friends i am dr sujit pardeshi the author of best seller book on dental practice management new age dental preneur yes i want all of you not to become a successful dentist but a dental preneur in your life eventually as you go ahead and grow your practice so today we are here with a very important topic on how to grow your practice and i'm sure all of you irrespective of where you practice irrespective of the number of years into practice and irrespective of the type of clientele you have everyone likes to grow and growth is the sign of life something which doesn't grow something which is stagnated has to go down eventually so growth is important and growth if it happens with all legal ethical and proper ways then it's always the icing on the cake so when i talk on practice management and growing your practice the motto is to always tell the world that it should be done by adding massive value to your patients in all legal and ethical ways only so before we start today is a very interesting day and uh, today is the valentine day so uh, i first of all wish all of you a very happy valentines day right and as it is said that smile is the shortest distance between two people and we the practicing dentist are the creator of the smiles 
So I wish all of you a special smiley happy Valentine's Day and uh, I wish that this smile which is there on your face right now should stay like this and you should be the real creator of smiles for thousands and thousands of your patients. Right? So at the outset my very special thanks to Aristo Pharma for giving me this opportunity to share my views and expertise on the subject of practice management and how to grow the practice. So Aristo Pharma is special. You all are very special simply because on this busy weekday because weekends and Sundays are always very busy for me. So it becomes practically impossible to take out time on Sundays. So on this busy weekday, you have taken time out of your schedule and more so out of your Valentine to be here for this session today. And you people are special for that. You people are special for one more reason because I always say that only couple of percentage of people in this world create history. And you go anywhere in the world and you will be amazed to find this number never change. It's always a handful of people in every field who do the majority of the things. It's always the minority of the people who are the change makers and game changers in every field. And your presence here itself shows that you are part of that 2% category who really want to do something different not only for yourself in your practice but at the same time for your patients and for the society and the nation at large. So I really welcome all of you once again and appreciate your presence here. So you people are special for that. Friends, I always say dentistry is a very wonderful field and we all will agree that this field has traveled a huge distance in an unbelievably small time. I hope you remember when the conservative dentistry book and the classification of G.V. Black, right? So it is not even 100 years old. However, in this 100 years, dentistry has become so colorful and we have traveled from here to here in the absolute ultra-modern clinical setups in few of the finest dental facilities in our country. So dentistry has traveled a huge distance in an unbelievably small time and we should always be very proud of being a dentist. And if you do right things in the right way, you will always love to do this vocation. So we have traveled a huge distance. For those of you who have roaring dental practices, I'm sure dentistry is something like this, isn't it? Because I have traveled the length and the breadth of the country and even some international countries talking on this subject. And I have seen every type of participant every type of delegate and every type of person who attending the lecture or the course. And there are a few who have roaring practices. And for them dentistry is something like this. But I'm sure at the same time, every coin has two sides, right? And so does the dentistry. The other side of dentistry, unfortunately, is equally bad. There are thousands and thousands of us around us who are confused why I became a dentist. And then there are thousands again who think that they are trapped into this extremely competitive and ever demanding field called dentistry. By the way, this is my son who has been trapped into this monstrous cycle of life. And I'm sure as a practicing dentist and irrespective of the number of years, lot of us have this feeling and the reason is obvious. We all know what is happening around us. We all know what is happening around us as doctors and especially as dentists. There are so many dentists. I started speaking on this subject around seven years before and when I used to say at that time that the tsunami of dentists is going to hit India, nobody probably believed me at that time. And we all know what is happening presently. We are already on the verge of make or break kind of situation. And we are confused. As clinicians, we want to give our best. But at the same time, there are so many things around us which doesn't allow us to do this beautiful profession the way we want to. And the days are already here. Every morning you get up 
and you see something like this. You see it on the cable news, you see on the television, you see on the in the newspaper, flyers and you know the days are already here. The moment you move out of your house, you see something like this and you feel bad. Is this the profession which should make me proud? Shall I be proud of saying that I am a dentist when you see something like this on the streets? And it just does not end here. It has gone to this level that this is what is happening. And because of the ever competitive nature of our profession, so many dentists around us, instead of living dentistry, people are living dentistry. Trust me, I have seen thousands of our colleagues, few of them have entered the real estate field, few of them have entered the insurance field, few of them have entered the stock market, few of them have become the mutual fund experts and what not. So instead of living this beautiful profession, people are living it simply because there is a lot wrong which is happening. And the days are already here as I told you and the day is not far when you and me will have to search for this man, right? I still remember when I was in 12th standard, somebody told me to become a dentist because there are 32 teeth. I really wonder where that person is. Jokes apart, friends, the days are really tough. The competition is huge and it becomes very difficult. Gone are the days when it was survival of the fittest. Now we all are at this stage at the absolute extreme, opposite extreme where from survival of the fittest we have reached for the struggle for survival. I am sure all of us would like to have a beautiful 5 star kind of clinic. Every dentist has this wish to have a great dental setup, right? I am sure everybody of you would like to have a beautiful waiting room. Like the moment patient comes, you make the patient sit in the cingulum or occlusal fossa and what not, isn't it? As an individual, everybody has a dream house. We all would love to have something like this, isn't it? After all the hard work, when you go on vacation, I am sure you would like to have the vacation in this beautiful Maldives villas, isn't it? And who on specially, especially on Valentine's Day, would not like to have dinner in aquarium. I always show these five pictures in each of my presentation. And if any of these five pictures motivate you, what is the way to get it? You can't just count the you know chicken before the eggs hatch, right? So if any of the five pictures motivate you, what is the way to get it? And I'll tell you something. I have helped thousands of dentists to grow their practice by lakhs and lakhs of rupees every month. Interestingly, nobody came to me and said, Ki sir, you go and have dinner in that restaurant and I'll pay for you. If any of these five pictures motivate you, the only way to do it is to do it for yourself. Because the only way to predict the future is to create it. Nobody else is going to do it for you. So you are the creator of your future and you are the holder of your destiny. And this is not just motivational talk. As a clinician, as a practitioner, you need to do something today which will help to shape a better tomorrow for you as a proud dentist. As Robert Kiyosaki says, your future is always created by what you do today and not tomorrow. So on this wonderful, beautiful, romantic day, let me share with you few very, very simple secrets. When I start sharing these five points with you, they will sound very obvious, very simple. But you know what? It's always the simple things which are often ignored by the world. Everybody loves complexity. But as Leonardo da Vinci has said, that simplicity is the ultimate form of sophistication. So these five secrets which I am going to share with you will look very simple. However, 
my very strong recommendation is follow them blindly. Follow them blindly at least once before you discard them or scrap them. And you will start seeing miracles happening in your practice literally from today evening session itself. It has helped thousands of people to grow millions of rupee ka practice. So there is no reason why it should not work for you. So these are five simple looking things and extremely important and powerful things which can really shape your practice at a completely different level. So the first thing or the first secret of growing your practice is very simple and you have heard it hundreds of times and that is nothing but being different. Yes, every single thing you do in your practice should have the element of difference, should have the be different touch. I'll give you a very simple example. If suppose there are five water bottles which are kept here, all the water bottles are of the same company, same size and same price tag. And if you want to drink water, if you are thirsty, which bottle will you pick? And I'm sure there can be only two answers to this. Number one is any. Why? Because they all are same. The other answer can be the one which is nearer to you. Like for example, if you are sitting here, you will probably pick this bottle. If you are sitting here, you will pick this bottle. That makes sense, right? Now why? Simply because there is no element of difference. Now, let me add very simple difference to the water bottles. Like for example, one bottle is kept in the tray and rest all parameters are same. I'm sure the chances of you picking that bottle are always higher as compared to others. It looks very simple, isn't it? However, it changes the results. Another example, if one bottle is kept with a glass to drink water, rest all parameters are same, which bottle will you pick? The answer is obvious. One bottle is chilled, rest all parameters are same. Which bottle will you pick? One bottle has a label, rupees two off, rest all parameters are same. Which bottle will you pick? I hope you got my point. And remember this forever. It looks very simple. However, the moment you add an element of difference, the product or service is sold faster. And this is such a powerful sentence. Put this sentence in your mind and in your practice, in your actions forever. And see the miracles. You won't even believe how the practice can grow by using one sentence in your practice. The moment you add the element of difference, the product or service is sold faster. And the difference should be visible. You cannot do something like, you know, all bottles are same. Everything has water, but some bottle has maybe, you know, any soft drink which looks like water or any hard drink which looks like water. The difference will not be felt. Whatever little element of difference you add, remember that should be visible. So this is very important. Add the element of visible difference in your practice and start seeing magic happening. You will be amazed to see how this can change the practice. When I started speaking on this, people never believed because it looks so simple. And as Warren Buffett says, simple things are boring. Interestingly, that is what gives results. And no wonder he's the third richest man in the world. Start adding the element of difference. Now you might ask, what are the elements of difference which we can add in the practice? And there are hundreds of things which you can do differently in your day-to-day -day practice right from the moment patient enters your waiting room or even before. What can be different?
your name of the clinic can have a different touch. Your tagline can have a different touch. Your logo can have a different touch. Your color theme can have a different touch. The way your receptionist greet the patient in your waiting room can have a different touch. The way she asks the patient to sit can have a different touch. The place where patient sits can have a different touch. The way she extends that initial information form to fill to the patient can have the different touch. The way she communicates with the patient can have a different touch. The way you communicate with the patient can have a different touch. The way you use your words, the way you use your voice, the way you use your body language, every single thing can have the element of difference. The way you present yourself, the way you present your staff, the way you present your waiting room, the way you present your operatories, the way you present your hygiene and sterilization, the way you present your cleanliness, the way you present the treatment, the way you present the cost of the treatment, the way you present your success stories, your marketing campaigns, your social media platforms, the way you manage yourself, the way you manage your time, your appointments, your inventory, your staff, every small thing can be done differently. And the list can just go on and on and on. And there is no end to this list. It's so powerful that it will change everything in your life. So the first thing which I want to tell all of you, the biggest secret of growing the practice is start being different. No matter how small the element of difference is, the moment a visible difference is added to the practice, the result starts changing. It is that difference which creates the entire difference. As Robert Frost had said in his poem, I chose the road less traveled and that made all the difference. Choose the road less traveled. Be different in everything. I hope you got this point. The second secret which I want to share with all of you is learn the art of practice management. And by the way, this is no marketing. This is very serious, I'm telling you. The problem is, as my introducer said rightly in the beginning, when you're in your dental schools, you learn all the technical skills. Most importantly, that makes you a good doctor. That alone cannot make you a successful doctor. In these modern times, we have few of the best setups. We have few of the best clinics, best equipments and instruments. And I'm sure every practice has all the dental treatment facilities which we offer to our patients. Interestingly, that alone is not enough to grow the practice. Why? Simply because everyone has it. And most importantly, because you can apply all those things, you can show how good clinician you are only when you have patients who accept your treatment plan. Isn't it? Unless you have patients who accept your treatment, how can you show how good clinical skills you have or how good dentists you are? Your dental schools teach you how to be a good clinician. Unfortunately, that learning is not sufficient to make you a successful clinician. And probably that is the reason that in spite of being in the same profession, we all don't have the same name, fame, success, reputation, brand, money, whatever. Our curriculum was same. Probably our college was also same. I know few of my college mates and even classmates are attending this webinar right now. So our learning was same, but our results are not same. Why? Probably it takes something more to be a successful clinician and not just your technical skill. What is that? 
and then there are two very powerful sentences or things which I am going to share with you. And this is number one. Said by none other than the world's first or the pioneer person who has taught the world that there are lot of skills which are learnable skills. Del Carnegie Institute has said that 85% of human success is due to your personality, your communication skill, your leadership skill, your negotiation skill. Shockingly, only 15% is due to your technical knowledge. Now this comes from none other than Del Carnegie, who was the pioneers of soft skills in this world. Interestingly, almost at the same time, another very powerful survey was done that why it happens that in spite of having similar education, people differ in the success. And when the result of the survey was out, the world was shocked. The survey said that the contribution of domain skill in human success is just 12 to 13 percent. And what contributes to almost 88 percent of success is the soft skills and the effectiveness of the soft skills with which you use them. Now look at that. Something which contributes to 88 percent, we do not even know about it. Domain skill, what is domain skill? Domain skill is nothing but our technical skill. We are dentists, that is our domain. Now this survey says that me being a dentist contributes to only 12 percent of my success. Del Carnegie Institute says that me being dentist, my technical ability contributes to only maximum 15 percent. And something which has been never taught to us, something which we have never heard contributes to almost 88 percent. Now few of you might get disturbed after listening to this or after seeing all this. How can this be right? We spend around 20, 25, 30 years of our life, huge time, efforts and money is spent in learning something which this guy say contributes to only 12 percent, 15 percent. How it is possible? But let me tell you one simple thing. This survey are right simply because we all have seen and I just mentioned had it been only about technical abilities, all of us should be equally successful or at least those who have better technical skills should be more successful. And interestingly, we see very different when we see around us in this society. It is not that the one who has highest technical skills makes the maximum money, right? In fact, it is the other way around. It is not that the person who is the sincere most person has the highest number of patients. Unfortunately, that is not true. It actually shows that it takes something more than just your technical skills to be successful. And what does it take? So I always say this, dentistry is all about 3M. I am not talking about any company or composite. The three M's of dentistry are marketing, management and professional mastery. So the role of marketing is to ensure that you have sufficient number of patients in your waiting room. The role of management is to ensure that you convince them for the proper treatment or whatever treatment that is required. And the role of professional mastery or your clinical skill is to ensure that you do a good dentistry. Now if I ask you which M is more important, one M gives you patient, one M helps to convince the patient and one M make sure that you do good dentistry. So which M is more important? Few of you might say marketing is more important, few of you might say management is more important, patient convincing is more important. Few of you might say that you know it is the clinical skills which are more important. Now let me tell you something. Suppose if somebody is very good in marketing only, 
So he or she will have lot of patients in the waiting room. But they will fail to get converted for the treatment. If somebody is very good in patient consultation only, you will be able to convince the patient for sure. But the moment you treat them, because you don't have good clinical skills, the patient will never come back to you. And if there is someone who is having great clinical skills, but no marketing and no management, it will take years and years before people come to know that your skills are good. The problem is, in this 21st century, which is extremely high paced era, you don't have that much time. Even if you just wait for a couple of years, you will have at least 10, 20 dentists sitting next door. So it is not any single M which is more important. All three M are equally important. As a clinician, as a dentist, our problem is we focus only on clinical skills. When you are in your dental schools, you take all the efforts to acquire the best of clinical skills. The moment you move out of your college, you attend different conferences, different courses to sharpen your clinical skills. That's absolutely correct. No take away from it. But the problem is your clinical skills can be showed. Your expertise are useful only if you have patients and who accept your treatment. All 3M are equally important. Remember this. It is the effective marketing which ensures that you have sufficient patients in your clinic. It is effective management or soft skills which ensures that you convince them for the treatment. And it is effective clinical skills which ensure that whatever you project through marketing and promise during patient consultation, you deliver the same. All 3M are equally important. Now my point is, start realizing this thing. I have seen thousands of our colleagues who are in complete denial mode when it comes to the subject of practice management. They think they don't need to learn it. Trust me, if you don't learn it, you will eventually get stagnated. And stagnation for a longer period ultimately leads to decline. Remember, it is not when you start going down, you go down. It is when you don't go up, eventually you have to go down. That's nature's law. Stagnation is the first sign of decline. If any one of you is facing stagnation in your practice for more than three years, it is an emergency sign that you should start working on something which will give you the growth. Because if you don't grow, you will go down. And the only way you can grow is focus on all three M's equally. Your one third focus, time, efforts and money should be for marketing. Another third should be for management, soft skills learning. And one third should be on clinical skills. Because ultimately, what are the soft skills? It is the communication skill. It is the presentation skill. It is your management skill. It is your leadership skill, crisis handling skill and interpersonal skill. This is what matters. Management is the essence of life. If you are not a good manager, you will eventually go down. Trust me. Only clinical skills are not sufficient in this modern era. And you can see such examples around us. Even if your work is good, you need marketing to highlight it properly. Even if you get clients or patients or prospects, prospect means potential patients. Even if you get prospects through marketing, you need that convincing ability, the communication skill to convince them. Start focusing on all 3M. As you start focusing on all 3M, you will realize that your practice can become unstoppable. Learning practice management is something which will add that extra icing on your cake, which will make it 
more presentable and more delicious. Learn the art of practice management. Don't think that practice management is something which you get better at as you practice for a more number of years. We don't have that much time left. If you don't go up, you will go down. This is second thing. The third thing which I want to tell you, and remember it's powerful. Because of the lot of competitiveness in dentistry, it has become more price-centric thing. We think that price is what matters to the patient. Let me tell you interesting, and this can probably prove the breakthrough for you. The moment patient enters your premise till the patient leaves, there is a conscious or a subconscious comparison that goes up in patient's mind all the time between these two words. The price versus value. As Warren Buffett says that price is what you pay, that means the customer, for us, the patient. And value is what you get, that means Price is what patient is going to pay and value is what you have to give in return. It's never about the price. Lot of us make this mistake of thinking that this is all about price. Remember, we are not into retail volume business where competitive pricing is the decisive factor. We are professionals. People don't come to us because we are cheap or we are expensive. People come to us with the expectation that what we deliver is more powerful than what we take. If you are of the camp that lowering the treatment charges is the ultimate solution, please take out this misunderstanding from you. Because if selling things cheap would have been the ultimate secret of growth, the cheapest car in the world would have been the highest sold car in the world. The cheapest mobile would have been the highest sold mobile. The cheapest gadgets would have been the highest sold gadgets. People are buying phones and mobile phones worth lakhs of rupees. People are buying wristwatches worth lakhs of rupees. People are buying cars worth crores of rupees. There cannot be a bigger proof than this that when it comes to a customer psychology, it is not about the price actually. Yes, there are people who are price conscious. However, your focus should be on value addition. Never focus on price. It's all about value all the time. And I want you to remember this forever. Every time somebody walks in, your value addition should be so much that the price should become irrelevant. I'll give you a little example how to add value. Take another one liter mineral water bottle. On any roadside shop, you will buy it for 20 bucks. However, in a three star hotel, I'm sure you will pay 50 rupees for it. And in a five star, at least 100. Now, if I ask you to pay 5 rupees extra to the roadside vendor, will you? I am sure your answer is not. Why? Think about this from a customer psychology. The same customer who is not willing to pay 5 rupees extra for the same product at one place, lands up paying 5 times extra for the same product at some other place. Why? Water is same. What is the difference? And you will say, sir, the ambience is different, the sitting arrangement is different, the comfortable sitting, the soft background music, the wonderful fragrance, the manners and etiquette of the waiters, the restaurant manager, or the way they greet you, the way they treat you, the way they make you feel special. Now think about it. You have actually landed up paying 90 rupees for that. Water is still 10 rupees. This is called value. So in your own practice also, start focusing more on these little value additions. 
and people will pay any price without bargaining. In fact, when it comes to value addition, there is only one word and that is called massive value addition. There should be so much value that no matter which price you ask for, people should be more than happy to pay for it. And I'll tell you how will you come to know about it. Nobody will say that you are, you know, your charges are very low. People are not that honest. But patients will always say this, your charges are reasonable. That means the value is always more than the price you charge. So from today itself, focus on value addition. A smiling face is a value addition. Wearing that apron is a value addition. Going to your clinic on time is a value addition. 90% of doctors don't go to workplace on time. And there are ways and hundreds of ways you can add value. It was never about the price. Had it been about it, as I told you, the cheapest things would have been the highest sold things in the world. And that's never true. The fourth secret which I want to tell you and which you must focus on is keep on upgrading yourself all the time. As Robin Sharma also says that in order to double your income and success, triple your investment in personal development and professional mastery. Now what is personal development? Is soft skills. And what is professional mastery? Is domain skill. Yes, remember this. Your formal education will always give you living. But your self-education will create fortune for you. Gone are the days when you just keep on doing what you are doing and people will still come. If you started practicing maybe 20, 30, 40 years before, there was no need for marketing, no need for soft skills, no communication. You go to your workplace in the morning and the waiting room was anyway full all the time. In this competitive world, in this world of social era, we have moved ahead of information era. It's no more information era. In this world of social era, everything is online, including all your patients. And unless you keep on upgrading yourself and your upgradation should be there in all 3M, your marketing should be your upgraded marketing. Your convincing, your communication should be a better and different level. And your clinical skills, your equipments, your instrument should be upgraded. Your treatment option should be upgraded. Remember, the more you learn, the more you earn. Keep on upgrading yourself all the time. Every single year, you must do something to enhance your clinical skills. You must do something to better your soft skills. And you must do something to better understanding of your marketing skills. Keep on upgrading all the time. And the fifth and most important secret, which is the continuation of upgradation. Friends, whatever I shared with you was just a tip of iceberg. The science of management is huge. Practice management is not something which comes with time. Practice management is something which is an art as well as an science just like any other field of dentistry. Learn the art of practice management. As you upgrade yourself as a clinician, I want all of you to upgrade yourself in learning the art of practice management as well because management is the essence of life. And I'll give you two very simple things where to upgrade and how to upgrade. And the first is, upgradation occurs when you start reading good books. One of the best way to upgrade is start reading books. And I'm sure all of you will agree to that. After you went out of your college or university, you have hardly read any books. In my courses, when I ask participants, have you read even one or two clinical skills ka book 
forget about the other books have you read one or two books in your domain itself after doing your graduation or post graduation 98% of them say no simply because the moment you move out of the college you get this feeling that you know everything and the problem is growth stops where the learning stops if you stop reading you will stop growing i go to different conferences i conduct different courses i go to every seminar everything everywhere i go and interestingly when i see at any book stall in the trade fair i go there i stand behind the people who are buying those books or looking at the books and you know what they think you know this implant book is costing 12000 rupees it's very expensive i should not buy it or three four of them buy a smile designing book and then photocopy the book what will you understand in smile designing which is the entire colorful world if you do a black and white xerox are you getting my point it's never about the price how much it how much time how many patients how much of clinical work it takes to recover that 12 15 20 000 rupees and think about it when you read it when you learn that skill you are going to add massive value to your patient your patients will be more than happy and willing to pay whatever you ask for so one of the best way is to read books make sure in whichever field you have the interest whatever is your area of interest buy the best of the books in that field buy the, if you are interested in implants buy the best of implant books If you are interested in root canals, buy the best of endo books. If you are interested in smile designing, buy the best of books on smile designing. So, reading books is a very powerful tool of growing your practice. Start reading good books. Coincidentally, I am happy to share with you that even I have written one good book on dental practice management. The name is New Age Dental Premier. the book written with canadian publisher black card books forwarded by none other than dr christian coachman this is a best seller so the only book which is written by indian dentist or indian author you can read this book or you can read any management book make sure start or develop the habit of reading we are in the early part of this year 2020 make it a part of your new year resolutions or goal lot of people are literally allergic to reading get rid of this disease of this allergy start reading good books and you will start seeing changes and miracles in your practice and life and another very powerful thing is keep on attending different conferences and good courses all the time upgradation can happen only with these two things reading books and attending good courses and conferences don't go to conferences because the trade entry is free don't go to conferences because there are two banquets go to conferences because there are good speakers go to a course because the mentor is good don't go to a course because the fees is less it doesn't matter how much you pay remember whenever you acquire any skill the price you pay to acquire that skill is only once but the value you get is forever the moment you learn the skill the skill remains with you till the last breath of your life so the criteria should not be what is the cost of the course or conference the criteria should be who is the mentor who is the speaker so when it comes to practice management i also conduct a course called dent excel it's a very popular two day course on practice management we have already conducted more than 65 batches 13 1400 participants and transform the practices and lives of thousands of our colleagues there is another course which i conduct called life excel it's a year long course and which is another power pack thing whether you learn from me whether you learn from any other mentor follow somebody learn this learn the management because management is the essence of life so it's almost 50 minutes since i am talking and i want all of you to make sure that start implementing these five simple things 
Start being different in your practice right from now. Focus on three M's. One M is enough. Enough of clinical skills. I'm not against it. I'm telling you again. Management and marketing are not substitute for clinical skills. They are complementary to your clinical skills. Learn the management and marketing as well along with clinical skills. The third thing is focus on value, not the price. It's all about value. It was never about the price. Fourth thing is upgrade yourself. And fifth, start reading good books and attending good courses. I wish you all the very best. And this, this is my website, sujitpardeshi.com. You can write an email to me. And this is the number on which you can contact. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. There are a few questions which are there. And uh, I would like to answer because we have some time now. So, uh, so the first question which is there here is, uh, how to grow the dental practice in semi-urban or small town areas and how to manage bargaining patients in such area? And the answer remains simple. I'll tell you what, I don't know how many of you know about me. At present, I'm sitting in my Pune clinic, but I'm not from Pune. I come from a very small town called Pachora in Jalgaon district of Maharashtra. The population of my town is just 62,000 even now. And whatever I have done as a dentist and as a mentor on practice management, I have done from that small town. And the secret is same. I have seen whether it is Pachora, whether it is Pune, and I'm sure whether it is Paris. How to grow the practice? Follow these five things which I just told you. And how to manage bargaining? I'll tell you what, my personal experience. I'm practicing dentistry for 20 and a half years now. The moment there is visible value to the patient, the patients do not bargain, whether you trust this or not. And I have seen this in the small town practice as well as a city, a cosmopolitan city practice. Because people bargain only when they struggle to find the worth of the whatever you charge. No matter what you buy, whether you buy your shirt, whether you buy a shoe, whether you buy anything, when you buy it, when you find it is worth for the price you pay. So you start bargaining when you don't find the worth. Similarly, if there are patients who are bargaining in your practice, trust me, don't blame them. Probably they are not finding the worth. And I'll give you an example. I'm sure all of us have seen this kind of patients that a patient who is not willing to do a treatment for maybe thousand rupees at one clinic lands up giving 2000 rupees for the same treatment at some other clinic, right? How? Simply because the patient was bargaining for 1000 rupees because there was no visible worth or value. And the patient found worth of 2000 rupees in some other setup. I hope you got the answer. It's always about the value addition. And the value addition should be massive, no other word. Another question is how to create value by keep keeping the charges same. Again, value addition has nothing to do with the price. In fact, any time if there is a comparison that comes to patient's mind between the price and value, the value should always be higher. How to add value? I think I told you n number of things. Every single point which I said in being different is the same point which add value to your practice. For example, when I said the way your reception is greet the patient, ask yourself, the moment the patient enters your reception area, do your receptionist stand up and greet? If the answer is no, think about it. When you go to any five star or four star hotel, do they greet you at the reception desk in sitting position? Are you getting my point? So value addition is not doing something big. Value addition is doing small things in the right way. If you ask me what's the secret of extraordinary success or results in life, and let me share with you, again a very obvious thing. The moment the word extraordinary comes to your mind, you start thinking that you'll have to do something big or different to be extraordinary. And you know what's the secret? It is just adding extra to ordinary 
makes it extraordinary. You don't have to do big things to get big results. All you have to do is to do small things in the right way consistently to get the big results. So how to add value? Do all these small, small things in the right way and see the magic happening. How far is regular clinic renovation necessary for a steady growth in the practice? Again, if you don't renovate from time to time, how will you show the visible value addition? Clinic renovation definitely is a value addition in your practice. You don't have to do it every month naturally, but after a few years you must. How to attract floating patients? I think the question itself answers it. Those who are floating will keep on floating. You don't have to attract it. Okay? When they come to you, make sure that you add a value. So much value that they should find it difficult to go to any other place. They should struggle with themselves to say no to you. And they will stop floating. Good for you, good for them as well. What should be the response to a new dentist doing treatment at a cheaper rate than us to grab our patient group? Let me tell you what. I don't know if you know the law of abundance. There is enough for everyone in this world. The place where I practice, where we are sitting right now, the building itself has four dentists. Everyone is doing good. There is enough for everyone. Your job is to focus on your value addition, your being different. Your job is to focus on making your 3M better and not what others are doing. As Robert Kiyosaki says, mind your own business. Apne kaam se kaam rakho. So my advice to you will be focus on your practice growth rather than what others are doing. Eventually, you will get what you always deserve. Is giving discount a good option to retain the patients? In my opinion, you need to give discount only when patient bargain. Patient bargain only when there is no value. When they find it's not worth. So instead of encouraging discount, I would like to, to encourage value addition, better communication, better presentation, better management. Learn all this. Better interpersonal rapport better leadership skill, better team building or team handling skills. And patients see all this, let me tell you. Even if it's a practice or two or three people, patients see every single thing. Because discount discounts your practice, not a right practice. Focus on better things because there are better ways to grow the practice rather than giving discounts. Does frequent free checkup camps help or hamper practice? Free checkup camps, in my opinion, should never be held in your premises because it will always be termed as a vested interest or a marketing gimmick. If at all you want to do free checkup camps, they should be done with under the banner of some organization, whether it is Indian Natal Association, a specialty organization or any of the NGO or social organization like Rotary and Alliance and what. Because that is the real social work which you are doing. And the real social work will give you more patient than marketing gimmicks and tricks. Don't find shortcut to success. People are no fool. Hello, sir. How can I save this lecture? You will get it from Aristophama. Don't worry. Very informative, nice webinar. Thank you so much, Dr. Manali. Uh, still, if patient bargain, how to manage? <laughs> still, if patient bargain, then it's your choice whether to give some discount. If the patient is genuine, you can. If you think the patient is bargaining only for the sake of bargaining, you just say that whatever we could do for you, we told you honestly, rest is your choice. That means you can go now. How to bring footfall to a new center? Very nice question. Okay. The simple answer is networking and socializing. Because your all digital platform, what they call it as online reputation. Online reputation will always take time to build. It will take six months, one year, two years to build. However, your networking and socializing gives you instant patience. The more footfall you want, the more networking and socializing you should do. 
इज स्मॉल और बिग क्लिनिक पे रोल इन प्रैक्टिस स्केल जितेंद्र सिंह गुड क्वेश्चन टू बी ऑनेस्ट बिगर इज बेटर दैट डजेंट मीन स्मॉल डजेंट वर्क ओके एवरीथिंग हैज इट्स ओन एडवांटेजेस एंड ड्रॉबैक्स राइट एवरी क्वाइन हैज टू साइड्स वॉट सर प्लीज शेयर सम मार्केटिंग आइडियाज अगेन डोंट गो ऑन टिप्स इट्स अ साइंस लर्न इट ओके वेन इट कम्स टू मार्केटिंग दर इज ऑनलाइन मार्केटिंग दर इज ऑफलाइन मार्केटिंग इन दी ऑनलाइन मार्केटिंग यू हैव गूगल यू हैव योर सोशल मीडिया प्लेटफॉर्म्स एंड यू हैव अदर प्लेटफॉर्म्स वेर यू कैन लिस्ट योर सेल्फ ओके वेन इट कम्स टू मार्केटिंग दर इज डायरेक्ट मार्केटिंग दर इज इनडायरेक्ट मार्केटिंग दर इज कॉन्टेंट मार्केटिंग दर इज रिलेशनशिप मार्केटिंग दर इज एजुकेशनल मार्केटिंग दर इज एडिटोरियल मार्केटिंग दर आर लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स वेरी लिटिल टाइम मे बी एट सम अदर टाइम वी कैन वर्क ऑन दैट बट आई होप यू गॉट एट लीस्ट सम आइडिया अबाउट हाउ डीप द फील्ड ऑफ मार्केटिंग इट सेल्फ इज ओके आई टोल्ड द डिफरेंट मोड्स ऑफ मार्केटिंग ऑल्सो राइट कैन वी एडवर्टाइज कैन वी एडवर्टाइज आर ट्रीटमेंट एज क्लिनिक नॉट एज इंडिविजुअल डॉक्टर ट्रीटमेंट आई डेंट गेट योर क्वेश्चन डॉक्टर हीना कैन वी एडवर्टाइज आर ट्रीटमेंट एज अ क्लिनिक नॉट एज इंडिविजुअल डॉक्टर ओके सो यू प्रोबेबली वॉन्ट टू आस्क इफ ब्रांडिंग योर प्रैक्टिस इज बेटर दैन ब्रांडिंग यू और वॉट शुड यू डू यू कैन डू बोथ दैट्स एब्सोलूटली फाइन ओके सो इट डिपेंड्स ऑन योर लॉन्ग टर्म पर्पज और गोल विथ योर प्रैक्टिस वॉट्स योर लॉन्ग टर्म मिशन विथ योर प्रैक्टिस इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मेक योर सेल्फ अ बिगर ब्रांड brand your practice in your name and not the practice name if you want your practice name to make a bigger brand brand it as per your practice name thank you so much sir asmita thank you uh, comparison of charges irrespective of value dr sandeep gaikwad let me tell you again people compare only till there is no visible difference which they find the moment they find the difference they don't compare at all trust me start focusing on value addition start focusing on being different and learn soft skills because soft skills are something which are real game changers especially in dentistry okay so it's 4 o'clock interestingly i was happy i'm happy that i could answer every question which was there so thank you so much guys once again and uh, don't worry uh, don't uh, sorry don't go we are not over yet Uh, so on uh, my behalf i really thank all of you for being here uh, present live in the webinar and uh, thank you to aristo pharma for this uh, wonderful opportunity and time so i'll just hand over it to our uh, representative from aristo pharma dr pankaj please thank you sir it was a lovely session and uh, i hope you all must have uh, loved it Uh, in case uh, you have missed some of the pointers or you want to again uh, go back and watch the uh, live webinar you can use the same link it will be recorded version will be placed on the net for next one month so if you want to see it you can watch it from monday onwards for next 30 days with the same link and uh, i would again like to thank you sir for allowing us to fit in thank into you. your uh, busy schedule and one thing that i learned from this uh, session was Uh, a small change can make a big difference so i will uh, request you sincerely whenever you uh, do the dental procedures kindly prescribe mega cv which is a comoxiclav and this small change will make a huge difference for us and we would like to continue these sessions and uh, again thank you very much uh, we'll meet again soon we'll let you know thank you sir thanks a lot thank you everybody thank you thanks sir